morning, friends. It is Miss Katie here, and I have another Bible lesson for you today. Today, we are going to be in Luke chapter 2. So, let's see if we can find that in my Bible. And we're looking for a big number 2. All right, are you ready? Can anybody find it yet? bit closer and yes that's right it's over here on this page and you can see up here that we are in the book of Luke but before we get started on our lesson let's go ahead and pray dear Lord we thank you so much for this day we thank you for the time that we've had we know many of us have celebrated Christmas yesterday but today um, is when our church is um, worshiping and honoring um, our Christmas service for you, you Lord, and um, that we are um, worshiping Christ, the newborn King today, and that we are uh, celebrating the birth of your son. Um, and we are so thankful that you sent your son for us, Lord, and that that is the greatest gift that we could ever receive, Father. And um, I pray, Lord, and ask that you will help the boys and girls to listen to the lesson today, that they won't be distracted from things and just the excitement of um, all of the different ways that they had celebrated already and perhaps other ways that they are still continuing to celebrate as I know that um, there's still more some celebrations that I have that we're doing and I just ask that you will help me to say what it is that you would like for me to say today, Lord. Um, in your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, I know yesterday we had um, celebrated Christmas where we were at, and we had um, many things to be thankful for and grateful for, uh, but we're going to go ahead and see what exciting things we have from our story today. All right, so let's go ahead and try really hard to listen and not... Um, think about those things that we've already celebrated or possibly things that we have um, to come and just be here in this moment to learn uh, more about Jesus and, uh, uh, and um, what God has done for us. All right, so after her visit with Elizabeth, Mary returned home to Nazareth. Mary and Joseph were married. They did get married. So, and the angel Gabriel had visited Joseph too. So, um, We're doing flannel graph today, so it might take me a little bit to get to them. But the angel called and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The baby is God's son, and you must call his name Jesus. So Mary and Joseph lived in Nazareth, and that is where Joseph worked. Soon it was time for the baby to be born. So at first, Joseph and Mary were not married. And then Joseph found out that Mary was going to have a baby. And he didn't know who the baby was at first. So the angel told Joseph to not be afraid to marry, to get married to Mary, the woman he was engaged to, um, because she's going to be God's son or God's mother. And she's going to have God's son and she's going to call him Jesus. And that they wanted Joseph to be a part of raising baby Jesus. So Mary and Joseph lived in Nazareth, and that's where Joseph worked. Soon it was time for the baby to be born. But the Roman rulers made a law that everyone needed to pay taxes and go to their hometowns to be counted. Mary and Joseph had to go to a town that was called Bethlehem. So... 
um, after a few days of traveling on a dusty road. Now remember, there's no cars, there's no airplanes, there's no buses. So they had to travel by foot and on some animals. So it took a while to get to places. And so it took a couple of days for them to go. And now Mary, she's expecting to have baby Jesus any time now. And so they traveled to Bethlehem and uh, that's where Joseph had been born. So Bethlehem was Joseph's home city. So even though he was in Nazareth and that's where they lived, Joseph was born in Bethlehem. And after several days of traveling on the dusty road, they reached the town and Mary and Joseph discovered that there was no place for them to stay. There was no room for them anywhere. And many people had returned to Bethlehem an innkeeper saw that Mary was tired and there was only one place left. It was a stable. And a stable is a place for animals. It's just like a barn. He said that they could stay there and Mary, she just needed to rest. And it was a clean and quiet and it was away from all the crowds. And then soon something had happened. Now, the stable might not be as clean as a room, but it probably wasn't as dirty as some of the other barns that maybe get um, worked in. So the innkeeper, he probably just cleaned the stable. And so there was a cleaner place, but it's still where animals live and sleep. So that's where Mary got to stay. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 7, it says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. So, what amazing thing happened that night? That's right, baby Jesus was born. We can see... in our little picture, Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. So, Mary wrapped her, her baby in strips of cloth, and the only place to put him was in the animal's feeding box called a manger. While all this was happening in a quiet stable in Bethlehem, some shepherds were on a hillside near the town watching their sheep. The shepherds would be there all night, it was dark and quiet and cold. In Luke chapter 2, verse 9, it says, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. So the shepherds, they're out tending to their sheep. They're watching them. The shepherds are over by a fire. Trying to keep warm. And then suddenly appears an angel. And the angel says to them, I'm going to read Luke 2, 9. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. So, the shepherds, how did they feel? Yeah, they were afraid. All of a sudden, this bright light comes, and it's brighter than the fire that's there. And the angel of the Lord says, though, uh, in Luke chapter 10, or Luke chapter 2, verse 10, um, then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. So, The sheep are quiet, it's quiet, and then all of a sudden, the angel's there. Oh no, what's happening? And the 
the shepherds, they kind of hid themselves a little bit. Uh, but the angel said, don't be afraid. The Savior's been born. And he told the, the shepherds exactly where the Savior was. So the shepherds uncover their faces and they look up and they see. And when they look up, they see more angels. Um, let me move some things down a little bit. They see the host of angels after it's been told to them that the Savior has been born. And loud crowds of angels in the sky were singing, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill to men. And then as soon as the angels were there, they also were gone. So the angels had disappeared and they had gone back to heaven. The shepherds talked to each other about what they had seen and the angel told us where to find the savior. They said, let's go into Bethlehem and see. And the shepherds hurried to the stable near town. So the shepherds are on their way to go find baby Jesus. And remember, the angels told them exactly where they would be able to find him. In Luke chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, it says, And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. Now, remember what the angels had told them. There is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So the shepherds came and they found baby Jesus and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And... So the shepherds found Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, and baby Jesus was lying in the manger wrapped in cloths or strips of cloth, just as the angel had said. The shepherds crept into the stable, and there he was, the Savior, God's promised son. He had come. I'm sure the shepherds told Mary and Joseph what they had seen, just as they told everyone else that they've seen. God's very own son had come to earth, and this was the best news ever. So, if you were to have seen some angels, what would you do? Would you be afraid? Would you be excited? I think I would be a little bit afraid because I don't know what they would want with me or what they would want to tell me. Um, would it be good news or would it be something that was bad news? So, I think I would be a little bit surprised to see somebody um, like an angel uh, in my life. Um, but uh, um, the angels gave the good news and then the shepherds were excited. So if you just heard the angel's message and had seen the Savior, so after you saw the angels, you knew there was good news and then you went and you found the Savior, the baby Jesus, just as the angels had said, what do you think you would do? Would you keep it to yourself? No, you'd go and tell people about it? Yes, that's so exciting. I think I would tell people about it too. Like, this crazy thing just happened. I saw an angel and they told me about this baby and where he would be. And then I went to go check it out to see what, if what they were telling me was truth or if I was just dreaming something silly. And then I found the baby, our savior. He's here, it's real. So, who did they tell? Do you remember who the shepherds told? I'm going to go ahead and read Luke 2, um, 17. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. So widely known, that means they told everybody that they saw. So 
um, they told everyone the news of Jesus's birth. That doesn't mean they didn't just tell other shepherds. They went out to other places and they told people. So the Bible says that they were glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. In Luke 2, 20, it says, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and it, as it was told to them. So the shepherds were so excited. They were praising and glorifying God for this good news and being able to hear and see the news of Jesus being born. So let's see what's going on with our friends Michael and Emily now. Mommy, Michael, and Emily had been baking cookies all day. They made fat gingerbread man, jam, jam filled cookies, lemon shortbread cookies, and frosted sugar cookies. Mommy arranged some of the cookies on two plastic plates and carefully covered each one with a clear plastic wrap. Michael and Emily's Sunday school class and their teacher, Miss Wood, were going caroling. Caroling means to visit people homes and sing Christmas songs. When Mrs. Wood pulled up in the driveway, Michael and Emily carefully put their plates of cookies in a box in the back of the van and joined their classmates inside. The children were so excited they stopped at one house, then another, and another. At each house, the children sang a Christmas song and left a plate of Christmas cookies. This is fun, Emily exclaimed as they headed to the next house. Everyone is surprised when we show up and started singing, but everyone always has a big smile by the time we are finished. Did you see the people at the last house? They were singing along with us. The older lady at the first house looked like she might cry while we were singing. I wondered if those were sad tears or happy tears, said Annie, Emily's friend. I'm certain those were happy tears, Mrs. Wood explained. That was Mrs. Baxter. She doesn't get to come to church very often, especially in the winter. I think she is lonely. You brought a lot of Christmas joy to her. That's one of the reasons we are caroling, to spread the joy of Christmas. What's the other reason? Michael asked inquisitively. We are visiting people who don't come to our church or who have only come a couple of times, Mrs. Wood said. And of course, people like Mrs. Baxter who don't drive anymore. That's important, said Trevin. I can't imagine not being able to go to church. We are sharing the joy and the true message of Christmas, Mrs. Wood explained as she drove. Tell me, Trevin, who first shared the message of baby Jesus' birth? The angels told the shepherds, Trevin answered. What did the angels say, Mrs. Wood asked. Oh, I know this, Emily burst out. Glory to God in the highest. That's what we are doing. We are telling others the greatest news on earth, Mrs. Wood continued. On each plate of cookies, I have added a little card with a message. It tells how God sent Jesus to the earth to be our savior. That's what the shepherds did after visiting baby Jesus, Michael remembered. They couldn't keep the news to themselves. They told everyone they could that the savior had come. Don't we know a song about that? Annie asked. Mrs. Wood exclaimed, go tell it on the mountain. It's a great song. Let's sing it at our next stop by sharing these songs. We are sharing the joy that Jesus is the Savior. At the next house, everyone gathered around the front door. Annie rang the doorbell. The door opened. The couple at the door were surprised and happy. The children presented the cookies and then smiled big, happy smiles as they started to sing. Um, so what is caroling? Yes, caroling is singing Christmas songs at people's homes. So what did the children get the people at each home? Yeah, that's right. They gave each person a plate of cookies as they were singing the songs to them. And what kind of people did they visit? Do you remember what kinds of people they were visiting? Yeah, those who couldn't come to church anymore and those who were lonely. Um, people who couldn't drive, and maybe even some people who just visited the church a few times. So, who were the first people to share the message about Jesus' birth? Do you remember? Yes, the angels told the shepherds, and the shepherds were the ones who were able to tell everybody else. So, what does it mean to share Christmas joy? 
Do you remember? That one was tucked away in a story, but Mrs. Wood kind of explained what Christmas joy was as they were doing the caroling. Do you remember what she said? That's right, to tell people about Jesus. Very good. You guys are so smart. All right, let's go ahead and work on our memory verse for today. We are going to do Luke chapter 2, verse 11. So, hopefully you can see that pretty clearly. I know there's a little bit of a glare, but we're in Luke 2, 11. For there is born to you this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 11. Let's say that one more time. Luke 2, 11. For there is born to you this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 11. All right, boys and girls, I hope you are able to share some Christmas joy with others and tell people about the birth of Jesus and that there was a Savior that was born and it happened just exactly as things were told. So Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That's where he was supposed to be born. Jesus was wrapped in a swaddling cloths and laid in a manger. The angels told the shepherds that he was born and where they could find him, and that's exactly what they did. And then they rejoiced and they told other people about everything that they had seen and heard. I hope you will be able to do the same thing for your friends and family and tell them about Jesus too. All right, friends, we will see you again next week. Goodbye.